Today, I'm going to share with you the top five reasons why I believe people fail at making money and having a successful business or side hustle on Amazon. I've been on Amazon FBA as a selling platform since 2012, and I've seen a lot of people come and go. Gurus, professionals, and average everyday people, I've seen them drop like flies. And here's some of the reasons why. Number one reason I think people stop doing Amazon or don't even start doing Amazon is because that it is hard work. Now, we'll give some people this. They understand that it's hard work. When I tell uh, friends and family uh, about what I do about selling on Amazon, it all sounds good, right? Having this extra income um, or being able to work for yourself, that sounds great. But when I explain to them how I do it with retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesaling, that kind of stuff, they sort of, uh, it falls off, right? Because it is a lot of work. Um, if you're like me, you also work a job, like uh, have a career or whatever it is that takes up a big part of your day, uh, then you're going to have to put in time after your normal work hours into this business. And I think that's where a lot of people fall off. Like, for example, I might go into work at six o'clock in the morning, get off at three and then work on Amazon until six, you know, during the week and then put in 10 or 12 hours on the uh, weekend sometimes. And then I, I personally like to take a day uh, of rest and not do a whole lot. but that's pretty much an average an average week now the cool thing about amazon though is that like you don't have to put in that much work okay but understand if you don't put in that much work you're not going to get that many rewards right put in a lot of work you can get a lot of rewards don't put in a lot of work you're not going to get as many so just understand that if you want to start this amazon thing or if you're currently in it you already know this it takes work takes research, takes sourcing, takes prepping, takes boxing up things to send to Amazon, takes all that stuff that takes time. For example, I'm lucky enough that I have a wife that helps me and she's been helping me prep and taking off stickers. So there's another person in that process, but taking off stickers from things you buy from stores can take hours out of your week, just preparing them, taking off stickers, putting them in poly bags, building bundles. So a lot of not exciting stuff that happens, be aware of that. Number two is people are not patient. This is not a quick turnaround. It's not like DoorDash or Instacart where you go out, you deliver somebody's food, you get that payout, and then you can request it right away. Not how it's going to work. You may put in, say, $5,000 one month and may not see all the turnaround and profit off that for another two or three months. Okay, So you have to think sort of long term. This is not a quick uh, buck making system. Amazon is not. If that's something that you're looking for, one of the other side gigs out there may be for you, or maybe even something like eBay may be a little bit more satisfying because you can um, sell the item and then get the return fairly quickly. With Amazon, that's not how it goes. You have to be patient. So if you're somebody that's in a spot that needs money right now, Amazon and Amazon FBA is probably not for you. But if you're somebody who wants to put some time into this and you want to wait for a little bit, you have the, the, the capital and the patience to wait to get a return and to start snowballing that income, then Amazon FBA and Amazon is going to be something that you could potentially be interested in because it has great returns for those that are patient. Number three is that they expect too much. And this is easy to understand, right? There's a lot of um, social media out there. There's a lot of a uh, influencers a lot of uh, youtubers that are saying you know you're going to make money hand over fist it's it's not going to be that hard you're going to make a ton of uh, profit and you're going to be driving a maserati you're going to be driving a lamborghini you're going to have all kinds of money to burn i know a lot of people on this platform that are successful but they will tell you as well you have to have realistic expectations you're not just going to be able to start with hardly anything and make a lot of money. You're going to need to put money in to get money back. That's how it works. You're going to have up months. You're going to have down months. And this goes for anybody that's self-employed. You're going to have months where you think, man, why am I even doing this? And then you're going to have months where you're like, this is the best thing ever. And that's just how it goes, right? In a business. So put realistic expectations on it. This is not something that you're going to start today and then in three months be financially free. But it is something that you can start today and work towards that goal. It's just going to take a minute, going to take time, going to take patience, going to take realistic expectations of how it's going to affect your life and the amount of time you're going to have to put in and what the returns are going to be like. Number four, they don't 
understand the fee structure. It never fails. If I post something online, uh, hey, I got this item for $5 and I'm selling it for 30, people are like, oh, you're a monster. You're charging people 25 more dollars than it costs. How could you? Well, for one, nobody sells things at cost, right? <laughs> Everybody sells things for higher than they got it for. That's how the world goes around, at least in capitalism, right? At least here in the United States of America and a lot of other countries out there, that's how the economic system works. You buy it lower than you sell it for. That's how you make profit to pay employees and have people have jobs and, and you know help the economy by you know, paying a mortgage and paying a car note or whatever it is, all that kind of stuff, right? So let's get that out of the way first. It's okay to sell things for higher than you bought them for. That's how you make it. But what people don't understand is that if you buy something for five and sell it for 30, you don't get to keep $25 of that. Okay. You may only profit $10 out of that, depending on what the item is. Amazon charges a crap ton of fees. Now, these are lower if you ship FBM. So if you're shipping out of the warehouse or out of your home or wherever it is that, that you're shipping from, that you're putting up the money for shipping, uh, then the fees are lower. But if you're shipping Amazon FBA where you send things into their warehouse and then they take care of the rest, the fees are high. And I look at this as a good thing because once I get my items and I ship them to Amazon, well, one, they have the option to be paid to prep them for you, put labels on them, put them in poly bags, etc. Two, they pack and ship everything once it, once it gets ordered. They handle customer service. They handle returns. They handle all that stuff. So those fees for me, I look at it as like outsourcing. I don't have to hire people to do that. I'm not bogged down with doing that. Amazon does that, and they do a really good job at it uh, for the most part. We all have our complaints, but they take care of it pretty well. So understand this. There are fees, and you need to know that because you don't want to make bad purchases. You don't want to go out and just say, hey, this thing is $5, and I see that it sells for 10 so I'm going to make $5 profit. I'm going to buy 100 of them and make $500. You're going to be really, really disappointed, and you're probably going to lose money. So you're going to have to do your research and understand the fee structure, or you are going to be blindsided. The fifth thing, people don't understand the risk. As with any business, there is a risk. You have the risk of putting up a bunch of money into a product and it tanking. In other words, other sellers get on it and say it's selling for 12 and now all of a sudden it's selling for eight and you can't make any money off of it. That's a risk. But to combat that, you just need to understand the data, right? You need to understand the data. You need to understand the markets. And a lot of that just comes with experience. So there is risk, right? The more capital you have, the more sort of risk you can take. But uh, just starting out, if you don't have a lot, uh, you're going to be risking a lot, right? So if you take $5,000 to start an Amazon business or 1000 or 500 or whatever it is, if you're putting all your money into it, you know, you're going to want to spread that out a little bit. But people will think, hey, this is a great product. I'm going to go in on it without doing the proper research. Or even if you do do the proper research, it could end up tanking or... Even worse, Amazon could end up restricting that item from you. You may have to get ungated, like get approval. So you may have approval, spend $1,000, send it in, and then Amazon says, nope, you can't sell this anymore. And you have to figure out how to re like get back into their system to be able to resell it as an approved seller. Or Amazon could just take the listing off altogether. You know, So those kind of things happen all the time. So there is some risk involved. Also, you're going to have to live without that initial investment for a while, right? We've already talked about that, but that's important. You know, if you take uh, $3,000 and you put that into product, you're not going to see that $3,000 back for a little while, right? So you're going to have to wait and you're going to have to uh, plan smart for that. Like if that's your last $3,000, don't put it into Amazon inventory, okay? But they just need to understand the risk. People do get kicked off of the program. Um, I have never been kicked off, and I'm grateful for that. I try to follow the policies and be compliant as much as possible. But you hear all kinds of horror stories about people getting kicked off on their first item or within the first month, and or I've been an Amazon seller for 100 years, and I got kicked off because I had a word wrong in the description. So you hear all kinds of horror stories. But it is a risk when you're selling on Amazon that they could tell you, hey, you can't sell on our platform anymore. That's just the way it goes. You don't run Amazon. Amazon is letting you put products on there or push your product, and then they're doing a lot of the work for advertising and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, if Amazon says, hey, you can't sell on here, then you can't sell on here. So that is a risk as well. But follow the policies. Do the best you can to follow the terms of service. Um, just have good business practices. Know what you're getting into, and you don't have to worry about that too much, honestly, in, in my experience. 
So those are a few things that I think cause people to fail on Amazon. Let me know in the comments below about your success stories. What do you think could stop somebody from really succeeding in Amazon? Because I want to hear what you have to say. What is it that you struggle with? What is it that you've seen people fail at? What do you do well? Let me know. So if any of these things are, uh, are affecting you or you find yourself in any of these categories, there's always a solution to everything. There's an answer, right? But just know what you're getting into. Know that it can be done. If people make great income doing it, become financially free, pay off debt, just have that extra money for whatever it is uh, that you like to have extra money for, it very much is possible, but you have to understand what you're getting into and go into it with a plan. Thank you for watching. If you like content like this about reselling, making money online, especially on Amazon, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, like the video, and until next time, I'll catch you all later.